I mean, what a, what a weekend they put together and just, um, you know, the race car that, that Rudy and the, and the guys brought and then the way that, that William drove it. I mean, just watching him qualify, how smooth he was. Um, and, and same thing throughout the, the, the race, just, um, just seemed to put the car in all the right places. And I, I never saw him make a mistake, which is what it was going to take to win today in those closing laps because Bell, you know, had a faster car with the, with the fresher tires. And, and in any, you know, big lock up into a corner, I think, I think that it would have been a different outcome. So uh, a lot of credit to, to William uh, in doing that great job. But, um, you know, it takes the whole team, the pit crew, everybody. So um, they're, they're, uh, they're truly on quite a, quite a run here to start this season off. And can't wait to, to see where they take it next. How do you feel about the development of William? I mean, this is a guy, when you look at his career, he is such a quick study. I mean, he starts and he finds success pretty quick. Now he's finding maybe a little bit of domination. I mean, you look what he did today. Can you talk about how you feel about his progression? And, you know, he's getting to the point now where he's the top winner at Hendrick Motorsports. Yeah, it's been incredible. Um, you know, s certainly when you look at history and, and you know, some of the best of the best throughout the years, uh, you know, certainly since I've been a part of, of NASCAR, you just don't see somebody with, with this uh, progression or this, this, you know, path to, uh, to succeed at this level the way that he is, yet, yet he's defying all that. And you know, honestly, it's, it's making us look at um, young up-and-coming drivers that, that might be the next stars because you do have to, even though we got a young lineup, you do have to be thinking about that and planning for it, and and it makes you, um, yeah, it ma makes you you kind of look at what's out there, what are options, what what does sim racing mean, and and what do um, guys that that maybe don't get into cars at five and six years old, what what are they capable of, and and that's all due because of what we've seen with with William and and how he's, um, I mean, I, I I will say that that he makes up for the lack of, of experience, you know, that he had prior to coming to the Cup Series through his, his you know, the way he focuses, the way he preps, uh, the effort he puts in. So I, I, I still think that don't discount, you know, what, what, um, you know what, what he's done to get here because it's not always the stuff that's just on track. There's a lot more to it, and, and that's what he's proven is, uh, is working to get him to the top right now in, in, in this series. Did that 24 out front and that kind of domination on a road course bring back anything from, from your past performances? I was thinking about Watkins Glen. That day you just kind of had the perfect day and ground everybody up. Yeah. Any of those memories? I mean, yeah, a little bit, but we did it with better brakes and better cars and <laughs> better a lot of other things too, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I do think that when you find a combination, um, you know, with, with the whole team, then magical things happen. And I feel like that's sort of what we had, but you know, the, the, the cars are all so equal now. It's so hard, much harder to find a, a, um, an advantage with, with your car and your setup. So I, I think that to me is what makes this even more impressive. Jerry Jordan, kickingthetires.net. Once again, you find yourself with the bitter and the sweet. You were, uh, you know, it's sweet with win with William, but you bitter with uh, with Bowman. You were out there kind of pumping him up a little bit. Uh, he raced a good race, as you you told him. But you know, how what was uh, what was going through your mind and talking to him and his thoughts? Yeah, well, let me go back. I mean, yesterday was huge, right? Because um, I remember sitting on the pit box uh, with with Rick at Watkins Glen last year during an Xfinity race. And uh, I think we dominated that race and, and didn't get the win. And, and I remember Rick hearing over the loudspeaker how Hendrick Motorsports had never won an Xfinity race on a road course. And I remember the look in his eye and how fired up he was. And I th I'm quite certain that day is when we started adding more races to our Xfinity program. Um, and, and also with the 17, you know, how special that number is. So that was truly special. Um, and what was, a, what was it? Oh, and Bowman. Yeah, I mean, you know, when Bowman gets on a roll and he gets his confidence up, I mean, there's no telling what, what they're capable of doing. So I'm really happy for them, two top fives in a row. Um, and, and, you know, they, they'd had a couple of rough weeks, so they, they needed this. And uh, Hendrick Motorsports is tough, right? I mean, you're, you're four of the top drivers and teams out there, and there's a lot of pressure on you. 
And, and if you're winning, then there's, there's pressure to continue. And when you're not you know, winning or you're not um, you know, at the same level as your teammates, there's a ton of pressure you know, that you got to get there. So I'm proud of him and Blake, the way that they've been working hard together to, to, to get some good finishes. And now I can't wait to see what they do next as well. Zach Sterniolo, NASCAR.com. Jeff, uh, congratulations on this. What, from your perspective, what, what do you feel like is something that we can take away from this first road course race of 2024? Um, obviously, you and uh, the, the, the 24 and the 48 um, had a lot of speed here, but the Toyotas were right there. Bell was really closing late. What can we take away from what we saw today? I, I honestly... Even though the 24 got the pole, I, I really thought it was going to be a Toyota-dominated race. I just we're seeing they've got a lot of speed, um, and and you know it's it's one thing when one car has speed; it's another thing when a, a a group of them have speed. That tells you a lot about what they have and what they're bringing to the racetrack. So it's certainly on our radar in a big way. It also, to me, is that much more impressive of what the 24 and the 48 were able to do today. Um, I thought the nine had great speed too. Um, please don't get me started on track limits and my thoughts and feelings on that and how that needs to be policed, but I'll save that for another day. Um, you guys can argue that if you want in the media. Um, but, um, and, and even the five I thought had, had a solid car and you know, with the spin and having to let the whole field go by, you just, you just can't make that up when the race flows the way it did. There just, there just weren't a lot of, which is kind of surprising. We normally at this place see cautions and you know, once you, once you get a couple of those random cautions, especially in the late stages, then it just gets wild and crazy down into turn one. So, um, and maybe the restart zone helped a little bit with that on the, on the um, stage breaks. But uh, yeah, it was, it was, you know, you just couldn't make up time. I thought all four of our cars had good speed, but um, you know, the, the bell at the end had the speed they played a pretty good strategy. I mean, I think, you know, I'd actually heard some of our guys talking about that strategy of, of staying out and just kind of doing a two stopper um, earlier and, and didn't end up going that route. So we we're all anxious to see how it worked out for, for Christopher. Um, I mean, they, I think he had a fast car all day, but, but certainly with the fresher tires at the end, it, it showed how much that that was really mattering as well, along with a good car. Do we have any final questions for Jeff? We'll go to Chris Knight. Chris Knight, catch .com. Uh, Jeff, to follow up on Jerry's question, um, the strategy that the 48 team did with uh, um, pitting a lap before everybody else did propelled Bowman two spots and he was able to come out behind William. Were you impressed with that strategy? I mean, it almost kind of worked for him other than the balance went away there at the end. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I want to dissect it and dive into it a little bit more with, with Blake and the team. Um, you know, do some of that on the flight home or when I leave here as well as, you know, tomorrow in our debrief. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, it seemed like it was, it was the right call. But at the same time, they were, they were a little bit short on fuel. <laughs> so I don't know if they didn't get it full or, or they were just using more than they anticipated. But, you know, it was going to be really, really tight for them, even if they could have held off. Uh, Gibbs and and, um, and Bell, uh, but as soon as those guys got by them, they started saving, and and you know so yeah I'll be I'll be I don't want to comment too much on it until I I get a little bit more of the information from those guys, but but I mean getting a top five I think was was huge and it was a you know it was a good call to obviously get the track position and who knows I, I, that may have helped the 24 as well right because they had to get by the 48. And, and, you know, that takes a little bit of time to do that. I mean, it was Bowman's fourth consecutive top five and fifth top ten overall here, so there's something about this place in Bowman. Yeah, I mean, uh, Alex is one of those guys where the, the bigger the challenge, it seems like the, the, the better he does. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave here and try to find more ways to really challenge him even more. <laughs> uh, you know, but, but uh, you, know, he, you know, he's a great race car driver, and – and it just, you know, just takes the whole combination to, to get the, 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 I mean, they didn't qualify well, but they had a good car, it seemed like, all weekend. And I think his confidence in the car, uh, especially once they dropped the green flag, it, it, it showed and, and Blake called a good race.